Psalms 145. David's Psalm of Praise. I will extol, which is to raise in words, to, pray, to praise, to magnify. Other definitions was to publish, to write. I will extol thee, my God. Not God, my God. O king, I will bless thy name forever and ever. Imagine the king saying that about the king. David was king over Israel. I will bless thy name forever and ever. That's the Lord God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Jehovah. The name that's above all names. Every day, not just once a week. Every day will I bless thee. Make God happy. And I will praise thy name forever and ever. Now, name that word of praise is the Lord Jesus Christ. There are to be no other, no other names upon a Christian's lip. Especially the, man of, the name of man of sports or actors or actresses or anything else. It should be all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Great is the Lord. Oh, no, they, with teens, uh, we have the greatest or we're the greatest. I don't think so. And greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Look at the three greats in there. Great is the Lord, the greatly enough to be praised, and his greatness. You can't find out how great God is. You know, we don't even know the we don't know nothing about heaven, what God has prepared for us. Great. What would be a mansion to the holy God of heaven? Ever really think about that? I mean, we think about a mansion down here. It's got plenty of rooms and bathrooms and, you know, a garage for each of the limousines for a day of the, a day of the week and stuff like that. But what is the holy God, our Savior, who will die for our sins when he said that? And will get victory over death in the grave and hell. And says he's going to prepare for us a, a mansion. How great is that mansion going to be that you'll never need a plumber, a carpenter, an electrician to fix anything in it? You won't need a first aid kit. You won't need Drano. You won't need a medicine cabinet. Ever think about what the things that will not be in that mansion? I believe it's not going to need toilets. You sure not going to need a shower. You won't need soap. You won't need to clean it. And listen, I'm just talking about the mansion. I haven't gone to the throne of God. I haven't talked about the cherubim. I haven't told about the golden streets. I have not told about the, I'm just talking about the mansion that God's going to prepare for us. You can't even search. He just says, I'm going to build a mansion for you and leaves it like that. Like, wow. I haven't even talked about the crowns. One generation shall pass thy works to another. Way it should be. Do you think the generation today of Christians have been teaching what our great grandparents taught about Christ? Before television, you know, they, the family would sit around and read the Bible. When a child done wrong, mama would pull out the family Bible, find the scripture, and make the child write the scripture. Today they give it a time out. And shall declare thy mighty acts. Let's take last Sunday, the Saturday night last week. How many Christian families, we'll just nail it down to America. How many Christian families last week, from Sunday to Saturday night, Declared anything that God has done. Very few. 
And the thing we're going to see over and over in Psalm 145 is called a testimony. And there was one church I was in that I think we did it weekly, if not monthly. I'm not really forget what it was. We would have a time of testimony. And do you believe the preacher would get up in the pulpit and he said, okay, it's testimony time. Raise your hand. And the testimony has to be about the Lord Jesus Christ. And people will still get up there and they'll give a testimony about themselves or how, you know, something that has nothing to do with God. That's sorry. Even after being warned of what testimony is and then you give up your whole, your holy worldly event that happened. This is all about the testimony of God. And when God has done something for you, you are to tell others. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty. Have you? Put the question on you. Have you done it? And of thy wondrous works. Have you told somebody your testimony? Something that you did. Something that God has done in your life. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. Don't you think Egyptians were talking? Even long after Israel left? You know, when they went into Jericho, Rahab said, we heard of all the things that happened in Egypt. And we're scared to death. So scared that only one person of that entire city, the few of the many, came to know God. Now don't expect everybody to come running. I have told my testimony and been called a liar. And I will declare thy greatness, how great God is. Note the word great. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. I wonder if the Jews do that in their temple services. Do they remind the Jews of the complete story? Or has it become a tradition and, and novels and old wives tales? Instead of what exactly has happened by God. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger. And of great mercy, mercy to treat an offender better than he deserves, and you apply that to great mercy. Because every man since Adam who's born of a woman should be in hell. There should have been never been Abraham's bosom. There should have never been a heaven for for souls of men to go. There should never be a new Jerusalem. But great mercy of God there is. It, there was in Abraham's bosom. There is a new Jerusalem. There is a new heavens and a new earth. Because of God's great mercy. Now that even great take off mercy is lacking from Satan Satan has no eternal hope for those that follow him and obey him the Lord is good to all even those that are lost even those that rebel against him he giveth rain upon the just and the unjust and his tender mercy now we read that word over, we think tender, all oh, sweet, precious. How about an offer? An offer in, of payment. You know, we talk about uh, tender, legal tender, money. An offering of mercy that God gives to you. 
today the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercy that he reaches out to you are all over his work. God done salvation all the way. Everything you needed, Jesus Christ fulfilled for you. All thy works shall praise thee. For us be crowns and rewards eternally. Those people that we had an effort in, in trying to, to witness to the world and those that do get saved. Those souls are a praise to thee. Don't go win souls. Don't do nothing to get the gospel out and find out how much praise you're going to get. Listen, you're going to get praise in heaven. Not only from God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, but those people that you help to come to the knowledge and the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, you guarantee in heaven they're, they're not going to worship you, but they're going to praise you. And all thy works to praise thee. Think about God who offered it all and allowed you to do the part and allow the missionary to do the part and allow the Holy Spirit to draw you and to be saved. That great praise and event of a salvation of one soul and all to God. O oh Lord. And thy saints shall bless thee. Dead ones. They, the saints, shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. You want to go to a tomb of a Roman Catholic person? Dig it up? Okay, what do you got to say to me? Come on, saint in the Bible says they shall bless thee and they shall talk. Do you see why the Roman Catholic Church does not want you to read the Bible? Because you would read the word saint and say, well, wait a minute. The saints of the church don't talk. They're dead. See what the Bible does to cast upon religion? Now they probably got, if somebody did read that by chance or watching this video and go run to their priest, they probably got some excuse. Somewhere in, in, in the places where they're gathered, which it can't be heaven because they can't give you total uh, assurance to grandma and grandpa and everybody else in the family lights the candles on that for you but they probably have a powwow area and to make things more modern they probably have coffee and donuts there today i mean and and they're talking probably something like that don't believe the lies they're dead they can't do to nothing the saints in the bible is someone who's alive i am a saint you walk up to that guy who wears his shirt backwards in Revelation 1 and say, I'm a priest too. I just don't advertise it. And I belong to the one true church. And it's so universal, it allows Jews and Gentiles together. And we do what the Bible says. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts. See, it's a testimony. Are churches making known what God has done through David through Goliath today? Or are they teaching about pirates and and maybe there's other junk that's that's I see advertised to children? Man, I hope that the stuff I see on a cereal box and a, a fruit candies, I hope that stuff is not in the church house, but I guarantee somewhere it is. No, what happened to the stories of David and Goliath? What happened to the story of Samson with the hair and, and his lustful desire and Peter the big mouth with a sword? What happened to them? Why are they no longer of an interest? Why do we got to have puppetry? Why do we got to have uh, all this nonsense? Why can't we just have the stories of the Bible as they are without the theatrical and the, the, the costumes and the decorations why keep why do we got to have that stuff and look where we are today Bible describes our church age as making God sick
They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. Now talk about power. I mean, may the force be with you has nothing compared to what God can do. God said, let there be a night light. Boom, and there's the moon, just by the voice of God. Now, what night light can you have in your bedroom where that thing starts off bright and then goes to nothing? And then go back to bright and work its way back to nothing? Without batteries and electricity. I mean, the power of God. Who has been throwing wood into the sun? That has not consumed itself. Who is the who is the, the traffic officer or the, the red light out there in the universe so these planets don't crash into each other? How come H2O can make can satisfy my, my needs that my body needs? Huh? That's the power of God. How about the power over death and hell? Three days later, he pokes out of that grave. Good morning, soldiers. How you doing? You did a really good job, didn't you? And the angels are sitting there on the tomb. That's power. And that's not even all his power. You wait till all the prophecies are fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. You talk about power. Again, that brings us to just the mansion he's got. That's power. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion, supreme authority of the power of governing. Endure throughout all generations. God is still on the throne. And Satan still needs to go before God to get permission to do something. Now that's power. Can you imagine if the, the, the terrorist groups will have to go to the President of the United States and say, well, we like to blow up this. this. No, you can't blow it up. All right, you can set the men's room on fire, but you can't. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. They can't walk and say, "Oh, we want Iraq as our." No, you you can't have Iraq. Now, just go back there and just be good little boys and girls and behave yourself. That's not going to happen. Satan comes up to God. You see that Christian over there? I know that Christian over there. I want to destroy him. You, no, you're not going to destroy him. You're going to leave him alone and let it be. God has power over the enemy. And the enemy has to believe and do what God says. Imagine Japan coming December 5th, calling up the President of the United States, saying, Mr. President, we're going to launch a full force tax on Pearl Harbor. The president wires, no, no, you're not. You're only going to send 10 planes, and that's all you're going to do. No, that's not what happened. The Lord upholdeth all that fall. It says all. Doesn't it say just to save. And raises all those that be bowed down. And you've seen some elderly people like that. Some people who are bowed down just weight of, of troubles and problems in their life. He says all. But we've been talking about people. In contents, the all is all those that speak and love God and give a testimony. You say, well, 
I witness to the Lord. I tell people what God has done in my life, and I, and I speak to my children about what what the Bible stories, and I don't have that worldly nonsense and stuff like that. And I try to do right, and I've fallen. You got up. Okay, well, I got pain, or I got thing like a, like someone has who was bowed down. There was, there was a woman that was bowed down when she came to Jesus, and Jesus healed her. Well, I got you know, I got my troubles. Yeah, but it's coming a day when all pain will be gone, all troubles will be erased. That's the power of God. The eyes of all wait on upon thee. Oh, I'm waiting on the Lord. He's my blessed hope, Titus 2.13. And thou givest them their meat in due season. You don't need to be having anxiety. God will feed you. That is something you need. And it may not be a steak. And you may die of malnutrition. You may die of starvation. Well, God didn't feed you. Oh, yes, he did. He gave you the word. He gave you the bread of life. He gave you the water of life. And think about once you die, the Bible says it's a pleasure for the death of the saints to God. You wait till you get the glory and he feeds you. He'll take care of you. He took care of Paul. And Paul said there were times that he fasted and there was times that he starved. And yet he still died. Thou opens, openness, opens thy hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. We're told in the Bible that the lions cry out to God. God feeds the fishes. God took, prepared food for, for a whale and then told the whale to spit it out. God sent food to Elijah by the ravens and told the ravens, don't you eat that. Now, I, I would picture, and this is outside reading the Bible, but I picture Elijah being so thankful helping those ravens by feeding what they brought to him. So, God sustains all. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. Definitely. 100% true. From Genesis to eternity. Everything God does is right. And holy in all his works. God is never unholy. We are. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. See, he's David all those times. Lord, answer me. Lord, help me. Lord, are you, you are your eyes open, Lord? Your ears open? David answers the question. All the times that we read the doubt of God answering our prayer, David says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call him. He just sometimes he says, Wait. Sometimes God is more patient than we are. And David understands that, but we in our troubles and problems and situations, we're like David. We lose faith. And all that call upon him in truth. Ah. You better make sure it's in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. Righteous desire. James says he, you don't get it because you ask for a miss. The, the consume of your lust. Those God's not going to answer. You might well, see the, the implication is don't even ask that prayer if it's for your lust. You're not going to get it. He also will hear their cry and will save them. There you go. The Lord preserveth to keep or save from injury or destruction, to uphold, to sustain. All them that love him. You're, there is a 
the verse right there today that you cannot lose your soul. God will sustain you. The day you lose your soul today to the salvation or the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ is the day that God dies. It's not going to happen. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. Got it? All the wicked. I don't care who they are. If they do not believe or do what God has told them to do in the law or believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if they have not, they will be destroyed. John chapter 3. Condemnation. Matter of fact, John chapter 3 says they are already condemned. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Do you do that with a testimony? And let all flesh bless his holy name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow forever and ever. So even in the lake of fire, they're going to be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even in the new Jerusalem, they're going to be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the new earth, they'll be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even in heavens. <coughs> I try to get that all in before I sneeze. Even in the heavens, there should be blessed in the name above all names. The only name whereby man must be saved. It's a testimony that, that God has given us to go tell others. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops, tell the world around me Jesus said. Shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountains.